Hey guys, welcome to Bible class. Today we're in Luke 2. Luke 2. We're going to read a lot of it, okay? But first, we know that we're going to pray. We're going to practice our verse. I hope you guys are going to send me um, a video. I know that it's long, but now you guys have had plenty of time to practice, right? Now that it's Thursday. And <clears throat> we're going to sing some more of our song. If Ms. Jessica's Garganta is going to work, okay? Okay. <clears throat> what song were we singing yesterday? You guys remember? We are singing Noche de Paz. So we can do the next two estrofas of that today. Okay, let's get started. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you so much for today. And thank you for the story of the birth of your son. I pray that you um, help us all to celebrate and give honor to the birth of Jesus Christ, Lord, by our actions and by um, living for you every single day. I pray that you help the students to work really hard to finish out this year strongly, Lord, and then have a very good vacation. We love you so much in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> okay, here we go. Let's do our verse, and then we're going to do our song. Isaiah 9, 6. Hold on, guys. <clears throat> My throat is not going to do anything today. Sorry. Okay, Isaiah 9, 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. <coughs> Isaías 9, 6. Porque un niño nos es nacido, hijo nos es dado. Y el principado sobre su hombro, y se llamará su nombre admirable, consejero, Dios fuerte, Padre eterno, príncipe de paz. Okay, here we go. Ready to do our song? Noche de paz. Third estrofa, third verse. Okay, here we go. Noche de paz, noche de amor, todo Sobre el santo niño Jesús, una estrella esparce su luz, brilla sobre el rey, brilla sobre el rey. <coughs> noche de paz, noche de amor. Todo duerme en derredor, fieles velando allí en Belén. Los pastores, la madre también, y la estrella de paz, y la estrella de paz. Okay, there we go. Let's get into our Bible story today, you guys. Remember that you're going to fill out your Bible story because tomorrow, tomorrow is the day we're going to work in our Bible journals, okay? The Bible journal video for tomorrow is very, very short. You guys know that. So if you need help understanding what those questions are asking you, watch the video. Don't guess. Because when we do the Bible journal, it's giving honor and glory to the Word of God, okay? Okay, here we go. Luke 2, <clears throat> verse number 1. So what happened yesterday? You guys remember? What happened yesterday? Remember, Joseph found out that Mary was going to have a baby, and he's like, wait a second, I'm supposed to be the one that's going to be the father. But when he wanted to know what was going on, who told him? An angel. God sent an angel in a dream. Swain, you guys dream, right? And so he found out that it was from the Holy Spirit that Mary was going to have the baby. And so he said, okay, we can keep um, our plans of getting married. And then we will start a family, starting with baby Jesus, okay, who is going to be the hijo de Dios. Okay, look what it says in verse number one. Aconteción aquellos días, aquellos días, que días, when Joseph found out about all this, que se promulgó. Un edicto de parte de Augusto César, que todo el mundo fuese empadronado. Now, this is interesting. Who is Augusto César? 
he was the king of Rome, basically, but we call him an emperor. And sometimes an emperor was even more powerful than a king, okay? Augustus Caesar. And he said everybody needed to be empadronado. What does that mean? They needed to get their impuestos. In order to do the impuestos, um, they had to go back to the town donde ellos nacieron, okay? And so Joseph now is going to have to take Mary back to the town where he was born. What town is that? What aldea was he born in? What pueblo? Belen. Okay, which is why they're going to go there. You guys, when you guys get back from vacation, are going to learn about the Romans, the Romanos. And that's who Augusto Cesar is. He was the emperor of the Romanos. The, the Romanos were scary people, you guys. If you think the Spartans were scary from Greece, mm -mm, you never saw anything from the Romans, okay? And this was the time that Jesus was born and the time that Jesus was di would die is when the Jews were being ruled by the Romans, okay? So look what it says in verse number two. Este primer censo, censo is when you count the people, se hizo siendo si reino, reino, gobernador de Siria, e iban todos para ser empadronados, cada uno a su ciudad. Pero usted, ustedes están viendo como um, Isaías, el profeta, el, el profeta, prometió que Jesús iba a nacer en Belén, ¿ok? And now, God is using César to send them to Belén. Okay, because God always keeps his promises. Look at verse number four. Y, sub, y José subió de Galilea, de la ciudad de Nazaret, a Judea, a la ciudad de David, que se llama Belén, por cuanto era de la casa y familia de David. So, jo Joseph is part of the family of David, and Isaías promised that Jesus would be from the linaje de David. So, here they go on their way to Belén. Verse number five, y para ser empadronado con María, su mujer desposada con él, la cual estaba encinta, y aconteció que está, estando ellos allí, se cumplieron los días de su alumbramiento. So they're there, they're not around anybody that they know, they're not in their own, um, in their own houses, and she's ready to have the baby. Now what are they going to do? Look what it says. Y dio a luz a su hijo, primogénito. Y lo envolvió en pañales y lo acostó en un pesebre porque no había lugar para ellos en el mesón. So they went and they tried to find room in the inn and they said, we're sorry, but you can go back in the back with the animals. And that's where they had the Salvador del Mundo, the hijo de Dios. This is my favorite picture of the story because look how peaceful it is, okay? There's Maria, there's Joseph. And there's the Hijo de Dios, and they probably had no idea what the future was going to be like. Look what it says in verse number eight. Había pastores en la misma región que velaban y guardaban las vigilias de la noche sobre su rebaño. What's rebaño? The grupo de ovejas. Okay, they had to keep care of their sheep. Now, guys, pastores back then, the shepherds in English, they were people that no one else liked. Can you believe that? No one liked them. Why? Because they were dirty. They didn't have time to get clean. They couldn't go to the temple and worship God because they always had to be out here. And they smelled like sheep. So it was like you have rich people that had all the power. And you have the people that have a little bit of money. And then you have the shepherds down here. And people didn't have a lot of respect for them. Is that a good thing? No, it's racismo. Okay, it's racist. It's discrimination. But look what happened. In verse number... Um, nine. Y aquí se le presentó un ángel del Señor, y la gloria del Señor los re rodeó de resplandor, y tuvieron gran temor. Pero el ángel les dijo, no temáis, porque he aquí os doy nuevas de gran gozo, que será para todo el pueblo que os ha nacido hoy en la ciudad de David, un Salvador que es Cristo el Señor. So they were scared, but the angel said, don't worry. We're here to tell you that the Salvador of the world was born tonight. And so in verse number 13, 
repentinamente apareció con el ángel una multitud de las huestes celestiales que alababan a Dios y decían, Gloria a Dios en las alturas y en la tierra paz, buena voluntad para con los hombres. Sucedió que cuando los ángeles se fueron de ellos al cielo, los pastores se dijeron unos a otros, Pasemos pues hasta Belén y veamos esto que ha sucedido y que el Señor nos ha manifestado. So they went to go find baby Jesus. Vinieron pues apresuradamente y hallaron a María y a José y al niño acostado en el pesebre. So all the people that thought that the shepherds were not important were the first people to meet and to conocer baby Jesus because God is humilde and he will honor those that are humilde también. And he loves to make us feel important even when nobody else thinks that we are, right? Look what it says in verse number 16, um, 17. Y al verlo di dieron a conocer lo que les había dicho acerca del niño. Y todo lo que oyeron se maravillaron de lo que los pastores les decían. Pero María guardaba todas esas cosas meditando las en su corazón. She was thinking and she was listening to God's wisdom. Y volvieron los pastores glorificando y alabando a Dios por todas las cosas que habían oído y visto, como se les había dicho. Cumplidos los ocho días para ser circuncidar al niño, le pusieron por nombre Jesús, el cual le había sido puesto por el ángel antes que fuese concebido. They were very, very obedient to everything the angel told them to do. Y cuando se cumplieron los días de purificación de ellos, conforme a la ley de Moisés, le trajeron a Jerusalén para presentarle al Señor. Como está escrito en la ley del Señor, todo varón que abriere la matriz será llamado santo al Señor. Y para ofrecer, conforme a lo que se dice en la ley del Señor, un par de tortolas o dos palominos. <clears throat> okay, so they went to go to the temple, just like they're supposed to. Look at verse number 25. Y aquí había en Jerusalén un hombre llamado Simeón. Y este hombre, justo y piadoso, there he is, esperaba la consolación de, de Israel, y el Espíritu Santo estaba sobre él. Y le había sido revelado por el Espíritu Santo que no vería la muerte antes que viese al ungido del Señor. This man knew from the Holy Spirit he would not die until he saw the Savior of the world, Jesus. And look, there he is. They came into the temple because of the obedience of Joseph and Mary. And look what it says in verse number 27. Y movido por el Espíritu vino al templo, y cuando los padres del niño Jesús lo trajeron al templo para hacer por el conforme al rito de la ley, él le tomó en sus brazos y bendijo a Dios, diciendo, Ahora, Señor, despides a tu siervo en paz, conforme a tu palabra, porque han visto... Han visto mis ojos tu salvación, la cual es preparado en presencia de todos los pueblos, luz para revelación a los gentiles y gloria de tu pueblo Israel. Y José y su madre estaban maravillados de todo lo que se decía de él. Y los bendijo Simeón y dijo a su madre María, He aquí, este está puesto para caída y para levantamiento de muchos en Israel y para señal que será contradicha. Y una espada traspará tu misma alma para que sean revelados los pensamientos de muchos corazones. Estaban también allí Ana. So they were prophesying to them. And I'm sure Maria and Jose were a little confused but excited too what God was going to do. And here's another woman, Ana. Estaba también allí Ana, profetisa, hija de Fanuel, de la tribu de Aser de edad muy avanzada, pues había vivido con su marido siete años desde su virginidad. Y era viuda hacía ochenta y cuatro años y no se apartaba del templo sirviendo de noche y de día con ayunos y oraciones. Esta, esta presentándose en la misma hora, daba gracias a Dios y hablaba de niño a todos los que esperaban la redención en Jerusalén. So the people in the temple knew. Simeon and Anna knew that this was Jesus. Okay, guys, we got to stop there today. Your question is, name three people that saw baby Jesus first. Three humble people that saw baby Jesus first from the story today. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you so much for your
the word of God, and thank you for sending Jesus for us. We love you so much in Jesus' name. Amen. Bye, guys. Have a great day.